Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. Now I have just received recently the uh, Spellbinders Better Press System and I've been having a play with it and as always this is a fantastic beginner kit. It's got everything you need to get started and start creating letterpress results straight away but I found to extend on that and to go any further I needed to start purchasing some other items some of the other better press pieces so some cardstock some ink uh, that are all compatible and perfect for using with this system this then led me on to thinking well do I really need to be purchasing those additional items or do I have things in my stash that will work as an alternative so I've been having a play as I say and I'm going to show you the results now and hopefully as a beginner this is something that you'll find helpful because it's certainly something I couldn't find anywhere on the internet to help me out. So I am going to go through with you things about ink, about paper, about the machine you use as well because I don't have the Spellbinders machine at home here. Also about cleaning your plates as well. So hopefully these will all come useful for you and if you stay tuned to the end I've actually found a really fun technique for a beautiful, beautiful result that I've never seen before. So uh, yeah, keep tuned for that. So we are going to start first of all with ink because I'm not going to do an unboxing. I'm not going to do a basic beginner's guide here because there's lots of videos out there that you can already see all of these details in but I found the first issue I had I guess was that the ink was fine it worked for the first time or two but after a couple of tries I found that the ink was actually becoming um, quite dry quite quickly and it wasn't really um, getting enough onto my plate it is a really small pad you're going to use this up quickly, but of course, Spellbinders do sell these in packs, not just in black, in colour as well. So I had a bit of an experiment with what other types of ink I could use, and there were loads of them. Literally any, really. I mean, I found Distress ink did pool on the surface a little bit. The first one I went for, I stuck with black. And I also stuck with the similar sort of felt pad. And although these are not the same makeup, so they're not the permanent waterproof ones in the same way that you need a solvent to clean up. And I will talk about cleaning up later as well. These two worked really, really well. Now, these are my typical stamping black inks here. And yeah, they just work just as well as the Better Press ink, I felt. So I need to be really careful as well, I've noticed about when you're applying your ink, not getting it onto the uh, background because if you've got a lot of pressure in your machine, machines again I'll come to in a moment, your background of your paper is going to start sort of touching um, that backing. So just be really careful about either not getting the ink on there in the first place or taking something and just cleaning up the background before you go ahead and do your letter pressing. So I'm just wiping off any excess from the background there just in case. I'm going to use for this example the cardstock that actually came with the Better Press system but I will again move on to alternative cardstocks afterwards. So I'm just going to tape this cardstock down and I'm using my own tape. The low tack tape in the box was great, soon used that up so I'm actually going to be using my Creative Craft Products low tack tape. This is the tape that I use for most die cutting. Um, this I, I do link this down below because this is the one that I use all the time for everything and it's really inexpensive and even comes with the dispenser as well which is so handy. So my ink I'm now going to run through with the uh, Versafine that I've just applied here just to show you that it, you don't see much difference but this leads me perfectly also onto the machine and I'm going to show you two different ways of using a different machine. Now you'll notice here that I'm running this through with my Big Shot. It says on the box that the Better Press system is compatible with the Sizzix Big Shot, but I was having trouble to start with. So let's just run this view through first of all and get that beautiful result that we're looking for with Better Press. Look at that, isn't that absolutely stunning? Now you've got the dimension, you've got the texture there, it's embedded into the beautiful cotton cardstock there. So that's using the Versafine Claire ink, which is a great alternative. Bear in mind as well, if you're going to be using waters and alcohol inks, what sort of ink you're applying, because of course you don't want to lose the detail in your outline. Now talking about the machine, as you've just seen me pass that through, 
I didn't just put that through without any sort of adapting the shims. You do have three shims here that come with your system in the basic beginner's box there and these should go underneath a magnetic plate but I've got underneath my magnetic plate a rather war-torn not looking very great rubber mat but it works it's probably around about two to three millimeters so it is thicker than adding in the three shims because what I found with the Sizzix Big Shot is that if I was to just put this through with the usual shims in and the plate in, I wasn't getting enough pressure to embed into the cardstock, but I was just getting enough to press that ink into the paper, but not always a great impression. So that's one way that I found I can add a little more pressure to be able to run this through with my Big Shot. I really didn't want to be going out and buying a brand new die cutting machine to be able to use this system, and this just works. There is an alternative way if you don't have the rubber mat, and I'll show you that with the next pass through. Now the Better Press system is created to be used with the cotton paper or cotton cardstock because you have that flexibility of and thickness of the cardstock to be able to press in and get those beautiful indentations that you expect from Letter Press. But the amount that came in the box uh, only went so far with me playing and testing with it and after a while I soon ran out of that, was getting close to running out so I wanted to find alternatives. So I didn't have cotton paper or cotton cardstock in my stash. I have ordered some, but until then I thought, what else can I use? And I've tried watercolor cardstock to see how that would work because in my mind it's quite a similar makeup, similar thickness. It has that flexibility and that softness that you expect from cotton cardstock. So this is a watercolor cardstock. I always have this linked in my description. It's this particular pad. I get this from Amazon. Check that out in the link because it is a beautiful watercolor cardstock I've actually trimmed it down to fit this particular letter press here but you can use that a5 or a7 if you wish depending on where you are in the world so let's see now how this works with the watercolor cardstock instead of cotton cardstock and this time I'm going to use memento ink just to show you that this works too now under here at the moment I've actually got my rubber mat as I did the last time I just ran this through but I'm going to remove that this time. Let's assume at home you don't have a rubber mat um, but you do have a big shot as many of us do so we're just going to leave this as it is, um, no shims in there at all, just the magnetic plate there, put our lid on top, let's bring our die cutting machine in. Now our die cutting machine does come with this teal coloured mat here. Many of us will have this and what I've been doing is popping that underneath because the better press system on its own doesn't actually have quite enough pressure in the big shot alone to run through as I said before and give the indentations it only does kind of the stamping of the ink so I've added in this extra shim now this does give us a lot extra pressure and I've added in the shim underneath because from experience if I add this shim in on top it really bends and curls up so just popping that underneath and now I can show you what we have so let's lift this up and again, I didn't clean my mat as I suggested you do. So I have got those markings on my paper. So I need to remember every time to clean that off. But I have got, again, with watercolour cardstock and with using the Big Shot with just that mint coloured shim there, I have got a beautiful letterpress impression there. Very similar to the first one. I've actually got a deeper, darker and more pressure impression there. So you can see it's not quite as fine lines, but definitely something that you can achieve at home um, by messing around with the shims that you're putting in and playing with the pressure, playing with your inks, playing with your card stocks. You're not restricted to only the Spellbinders items, although of course I have to say I'd imagine you'll get the very best possible results by using Spellbinders. Now I have promised you a technique as well and a couple of other things I want to talk to you about. Now I have got ink on the back of my plate here and let's just imagine I did this with the Better Press ink. So oh, I've accidentally put some on there. Now if I just take a wet tissue for example, I 
this is not going to come off with water it is waterproof there's a little bit of the wet ink coming off there but i'm not getting it off the back so i'm going to remove this imagine i have used my better press ink this i found fantastic for cleaning my mat with no adverse results afterwards it just works beautifully so stays on cleaner anything that's sort of your archival ink cleaner and i just rub that on the surface there you can do it on the actual letterpress uh, metal there as well and let's just clean look how perfect that is everything has come off now obviously if you are using memento if you are using your versafine or any other rinks you should be able to clean that up with wet water a wet wipe something like that wet water oh water's wet <laughs> a wet cloth but if you are using the better press ink and you're getting marks on your base plate i found this the best way to clean them now i've talked to you through different inks i've talked to you through different combinations in your big shop i've talked to you through different paper as well let's do one more impression and let's see this technique that i absolutely love for this i am going to very well as much as possible clean up the uh, letterpress here this plate needs to be super clean i don't want any ink on it first of all now for this technique i'm going back to my cotton cardstock not for any reason it will work with the watercolor as well i've had fantastic results with that only because i've still got a little bit left to use up I'm using the plate that came in with my starter kit so I've still got this floral to show you um, and I'm going to be running this through with the um, shim the mint colored shim in my big shot that I just showed you but I'm actually going to be running this through with no ink okay so just placing this on there dry I'm going to pop my shim in under there and it doesn't matter here whether you decide to use your rubber mat underneath the magnetic base do not put your rubber mat underneath your plate either on top or underneath in the machine it will just curl up it will get trapped in the rollers it won't work you need a much sturdier plate to go either under or over the better press system as i am, am here with the mint shim but you can put your rubber plate in the middle underneath the magnetic base so just running that through making sure i've got that really good pressure lifting this up and i have got you can see i had a little bit of ink left on my um on my plate there but i have got a beautiful beautiful impression now let me just adjust the focus and bring this up to the camera for you there so now we can see all of that beautiful detail that we've got in there as i say there was a couple of little black spots that might even be cardstock look i can almost brush those away how stunning that could be a beautiful wedding invitation for example but let's take it a step further and really highlight that impression for this i'm going to take a brayer and i'm going to take some distress oxides these could be any sort of ink and i'm just going to brayer ink over this so i'm going to go with a darker green color at the bottom and instantly you can see that image starting to be revealed so this is one of those techniques where you're not going to have solid color it's a bit of an artsy background but it's absolutely stunning now i know with my distress oxides i can easily clean my mat afterwards with water so i'm not fussed about going over the edge i'm not trying to avoid that look how gorgeous the detail is coming through the more color we add again i will hold this up to the camera in a moment i'm going to then go along the top half with a slightly lighter color just to give some variation a bit of an ombre look so i've gone with evergreen bow and bundled sage from the distress range but as i say you can use any color ink you wish any type of ink you wish for this with the brayer um, you could even have a go and see what happens with watercolors because of course watercolors like to pool within indentations that could be a fun effect you could instead of adding colored ink you could add a clear ink to your plate let it press that and then use clear embossing powder to seal that ink in and then add your color over the top there's so many techniques you can do with the better press system it's so much fun but i wanted to open this up to everybody regardless of what tools and materials you have 
at home. Let's just bring this up and see exactly what it really looks like. There we go. So we've really picked out the detail around it and just highlighted those gorgeous florals in white instead. So hopefully this helps you if you've been struggling like me with a lack of supplies that are suitable to use with the Better Press and lack of a video and information out there already. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be getting this system, if you already have it, how you found it and will you be trying any of these techniques and a little sneak peek for you, I actually have two textures Better Press plates coming up very soon or rather later in the year not too long to wait. I am so excited to show you even more techniques that you can be using with those and with this system.